Hi guys, so I decided for my presentation I wanted to research um, structured and unstructured play. I really wanted to focus on the differences, the similarities, and the developmental impact that both have on children at different stages of development. Um, I've always been really interested um, in the differences and similarities of these two kinds of play. Um, and as a nanny, I usually go between both, providing more guided activities as well as giving the kids I work with um, a free play environment where they are completely in charge and leading uh, what we're playing in. However, I also know that I'm working with two different girls who are very different personality-wise as well as at different developmental stages and I've always wondered which one of them would benefit from a certain kind of play more. I really enjoyed this opportunity to dig into the research and um, come up with some pros and cons of each as well as uh, how they impact kids at different uh, developmental stages. So structured play, what I found was that this is where a child is following rules, guidance, or direction of an adult within a play environment. So this can look like a lot of things. Um, some example board games uh, and our team sports, um, guided art activities or task-oriented challenges. Um, these are all ways that adults are guiding the time that the child is spending in play um, and leading that. Some pros that I found from the research were mainly focused, um, the studies were mainly focused on school environments, particularly how um, structured and unstructured recesses impact children. So what they found was that um, structured play increased some of the children's physical activity participation um, and might be develop necessary for the development of fine motor skills. Um, additionally, for the children who weren't as highly motivated to participate in physical activity, structure and encouragement was really necessary to promote it. Um, another research supported this, saying that structured recess produ produced more physical activity from their participants. Um, some cons that I found <clears throat> were that all children are at different um, developmental stages and have different needs. And so this type of recess could actually limit physical activity behavior in some children who are highly active without the structure. Um, and also that because the themes and content are predetermined and we're already limiting um, the play environment to the, those predetermined themes and content, um, we are limiting it even more by being aware of the children's individual abilities. And so that can be seen as a really limiting form of play. Um, and that's the con that I found from the research. The developmental impact from our very own textbook for this class, I found that Scarlett said, um, structured play is a building block for play development. Um, activities encouraged or provided by adults promotes the structure and scaffolding development that is so important for children at young ages. Um, another study found that children who are entering into their school-aged stage of development uh, benefited more from encouragement, individual feedback, and instruction, um, the instruction that structured play offers. And for children um, in earlier development that might have developmental delays, another study found that this could really be helpful. Um, what they found was that developmentally appropriate physical education within structured play environments can serve as a vehicle to which preschoolers and developmental delays um, enhance their fundamental movement skills, learn to interact um, within their home and school environments, learn about themselves, what their bodies can do, their limitations, um, and also um, this could also encourage them to play with their peers who don't have developmental delays. Um, and that was found in 2002 by um, researchers Murata and uh, her fellow team. So moving on to unstructured play. Unstructured play um, is an environment where a child acts on interest and plays uh, without direction from an adult. So completely self-led, self-motivated, um, and allowing the child to explore their play environment themselves. In a study comparing engagement levels and learning outcomes in children, researchers observed play sessions with both 
with uh, children and parents who were both um, offering structured play environments as well as unstructured um, play environments. The researchers found that um, children whose caregivers were more collaborative um, and allowed the child to lead played the longest during free play sessions. Um, and that was interpreted as the child being most engaged because they were engaged um, or they interacted in the play environment for much longer. So they found that collaborative play situations created a, a more dynamic learning environment for children. Um, similar to the study I found uh, supporting structured play during recess, um, um, a similar study found that unstructured recess produced um, more active engagement from participants who were already motivated to um, participate in physical activity from themselves. Um, unstructured play can foster intrinsic motivation um, for children participating in physical activity. Um, and additionally, a study conducted within the hospital environment found that unstructured play activities with parents or caregivers resulted in a significant decrease in anxiety level of the child during the procedure, um, which is really relevant for our field of study right now. Some cons that I found was that if the goal of the activity is to... Um, move forward in a particular area or to explore a certain type of feeling um, that this kind of play lacks direction and is unsupportive for those therapeutic specific therapeutic environments so that was just one drawback uh, from unstructured play some developmental impacts i found for unstructured play is that in educational environments research showed that there had been a shift in how teachers supported play in a school setting by engaging in co-play um, Unstructured participation in students' play serves to stimulate constructive play in children who don't normally engage in free play with other children. Um, it was found to foster creativity, physical activity, engagement with the imagination um, in preschool children. Served as a platform for metacognition and um, the development of learning skills. Um, and in a study conducted uh, in 2011, found that child engagement in unstructured play positively impacted self-efficacy development. So while I was looking into all this research, what I really wanted to see is how can this be used um, for different children that we're working with? How can we utilize the pros and cons of each, the developmental impacts of each, um, uh, as a, how can we use this as a lens into working with different kinds of kids? And I wanted to emphasize here that both are necessary for child development in our work with children. But I also brainstormed some ways that you can best utilize these methods of play when working with kids. So for kids who are naturally shy or timid and not really very social, socially inclined, I should say, um, for school-aged children becoming interested in rule-based play, um, in sports and in games, um, structured play would really benefit these kids. Um, in addition, you can use structured play to encourage specific forms of coping um, or processing traumatic experiences um, in more therapeutic environments. Um, to best utilize unstructured play, um, you can use this as a way to build relationship, rapport, um, and trust with a child that you're just meeting. Um, you can use unstructured play to aid in processing after a traumatic experience, um, as well as for preschool -age children uh, to um, encourage them to engage with their imagination further. Some areas of future research I kind of observed as I was um, reading through all the studies I found. Uh, for future research, there's a need for observation and the impact of these two forms of play um, in the home environment um, more specifically, but also in any environment outside of school, outside of sports, um, and even outside of the medical setting. However, I will say that I think that there could be more done on the hospital setting specifically, because I only found a few. But there's a lot of different environments to observe which one, which forms, um, or which, <laughs> sorry, um, how these different kinds of play benefit children in different um, scenarios and environments. So that's what I found. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what else you guys have found.